Good morning, brother, sister, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. How are you today? Hope, um, hope you are doing as well as our Lord uh, allows you to. Keep this in mind. No matter how you are right now, you are doing better than you deserve. Isn't that right, brother? We got something that we are going to talk about today that's going to be not only a kick onto the one who is speaking this onto you, but also onto all of you. What are we going to talk about today? Ooh. We're going to talk about pride. Yeah, pride. We're going to talk about pride today. Like I said, this is going to be a video that's going to kick not only the one speaking with you, it's also going to kick you too. And deservedly, deservedly so. <laughs> Deservedly, deservedly, deservedly. So, <laughs> um, I, I have a pride problem. I do. I have a really big pride problem. I um, allow myself to think more highly of myself than I ought to think. And um, when my pride gets the best of me, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, chastens me quite brutally. But I have a pride problem. And my Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, has given to me a, a actual thorn in the flesh, a heart problem, to keep me humble, lest I exalt, be exalted or get exalted or start thinking I'm a, a lot bigger than my own britches, you know. So do you. A lot of you. Pride. Pride is, is one of the most, if not the most wickedest of all sins there is. Thinking that we are something that we are not. Thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. For example, the other day, uh, what was it, a day or two ago, a dear brother from Croatia, um, I had, he and I had spake on something a while ago, then he comes back and he's like, you know, brother, um, I think what you told me was a little inaccurate. And he corrected me about um, the word quick. Okay? And praise the Lord, he, he corrected me on it. You know, um, I told him that in context of uh, uh, one of one of the Psalms, that quick actually meant expeditious. And then he's like, you know, brother, I think, uh, and he, he, you know, went through the scriptures that he sent me. It's like, you're right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, correction. Correction comes, you know, when a brother, someone of the Church of the Living God, or even a sister of the Church of the Living God, you know, comes to you and it's like, hey, you know, can, I, I, can we can we talk about that really quick? Praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for it. But see, there are those out there who um, get a little uh, too full of themselves. And they put themselves above and beyond. It's called pride. Yeah. This is going to kick myself and it's going to kick you too because uh, like I told you I have a pride problem and you, here's a warning for any of you if you got someone who you come across and say I don't have a pride problem <laughs> or I, I don't know if I have a pride problem yeah yeah Someone who says, um, uh, what's his name, that, what's that one guy's name, I can't even remember. He's like, I'm a very humble person. I snuff my pride. <sighs> oh, oh yeah, and then when he was rebuked, he's like, I am more than willing to repent, but you did this. Uh, yeah, 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 I smelt something. I smelt something, yeah. Enough of that. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. 
Uh, we, we got a video today. Okay, you want some meat? Hope you're hungry. Let's start at the beginning. Chapter 3. Brad, we've been through that. Shh, shut up. I love you. Be quiet. This is meat. You know, you know, the times that we are living in right now, for pride to rear up into people like a raging pack of hemorrhoids, beg your pardon, it's, 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 I'm dumbfounded by it. In these times, when you and I as the church of the living God, we need to align our lives to, according to the scriptures and walk humbly before our Lord, before our God, okay? Uh, we need that now. We need his protection, okay? We need the Lord's protection right now. Now, you and I are saved, uh, those who are of the church of the living God. Um, you know, he, we are not appointed to wrath. But, you know, if you're messing around with sin and you're in pride... He might let some things happen to you that normally wouldn't happen to you because you were in pride. This is a very meat for us today. So go to the beginning, chapter 3, Genesis, the beginning. Okay? Genesis chapter 3. Let's start with verses 1 on verse 7. Okay? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Satan, that is the serpent, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, okay? Satan was in the Garden of Eden, okay? And it says here, which the Lord God had made. Satan is a created being, okay? And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Questioning what God said. That is, this is the genesis of everything that is false today. Okay? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now God never said, neither shall ye touch it. Um, uh, you go ahead now in your own time look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 okay our Lord did not say neither shall you touch it lest you die Eve added to the word of what our Lord said added to it okay she had Satan right before her okay Adam was off doing whatever he was doing okay so and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die no 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 yeah, hath God said. You know, the Bibles, okay, the Catholic disease creators, okay, the Jesuits. Yeah, hath God said. No, 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 no. You, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Being rightly to judge between good and evil upon your own dictate. Where before this, there was no sin. Before the fall of man. There was no sin. Okay? Be, um, you know, we're supposed to be uh, wise concerning evil and simple uh, concerning good. That kind of thing. I might have just said that backwards. We're going to touch on that uh, a little later. But, um, yes, before this, there was no sin. And here comes Satan along saying, hey, you disobey what the Lord said. The, the actual fruit is actually kind of insignificant. There are some saying that they ate the fruit and then blood came into them or something. I don't know. Not there in the scriptures to find that. But the fact is that they disobeyed what God said. Okay? That brought this all on upon us. Okay? Through them. All right? Verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, for the belly, and it was pleasant to the eyes, that it looked good, and a tree desired to make one wise, to make you wise. Now look at the self-serving right there. Good for food, for the belly. 
pleasant to the eyes, looks good, and one to make you wise. Me, me, me. Pride. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. They disobeyed the Lord. They brought sin into the world. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So, number one, where was Adam when Satan came along to tempt Eve? Number two, Satan tempted the flesh, pride. And number three, through that, he went, number one, to the woman, because where was Adam? And the woman came after she had done that and gave to her husband. Hence, here we are today. But look at verse six. Look at that. See, this is what Satan tempted through pride. At this time, there was no pride until disobedience. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Look at verse 6 again. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to, to be desired to make one wise, me, 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 she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat. She also shared it, <laughs> and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And hence, here we are today. So the beginning, pride. And pride came from the temptation of who? Satan. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 on to verse 19. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in the garden of Eden. Tyrus was not in the garden of Eden. Could he have been? Doubtful, because uh, remember, the garden of Eden... Before the flood and after the flood, keep that in mind. No, no, he is not directing, he is not speaking uh, about Tyrus. He's speaking about who? I'll give you 50 guesses and the first 49 don't count. Who was in the Garden of Eden? God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, Adam, Eve, and there was another one. That be the serpent, the devil, Satan. Okay, let's continue with this. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Sorry if I botched it at first. Every precious stone was thy covering, beautiful to the eyes. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes. Ah! <laughs> was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. And the serpent was uh, more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had created. Okay? It was a tree that was good for food. One that was pleasant for the eyes. One to make you wise. Think about sin. It's one that's good for what? For your flesh, right? To satisfy your lust and your flesh, your belly, right? Number two, it looks so good. Doesn't sin look so beautiful, huh? Because Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 on to verse 15, okay? Doesn't sin look so beautiful? And it's one to make you wise, yeah. You know better. You can judge yourself. You are your own God, right? Yeah. See what this is what this is where this comes from. This is where pride comes from, originates. 
Satan. Let's continue. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Iniquity was found. You were perfect in the day that thou wast created. You were perfect, doing well until well, iniquity was found in you. By the multitude of thy merchandise stuff. Yeah, there, hot shot. By the merchant multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Don't look at me. Look at verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Look at verse 13 again. Look at it. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the, in the day that thou was created. Remember, the devil, Satan. See, Satan wants you to think, to, to, to distract you, that what he truly is is this ugly, hideous, horned, stigmata, Vomiting pea green soup, uh, all this nonsense. No, 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 no. Satan is beautiful. Satan is absolutely beautiful. He's in, he is transformed into an angel of light. Why do you think sin is so uh, alluring? Attractive. Especially to the flesh, you know, the skin suit, yeah, where sin has been relegated to. Romans 8, 1 through 4. Okay? You Catholics, shh, shut up. Okay? Let's continue. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Oh, yeah. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. In other words, a good warning for us here today, Church of the Living God, and even though, even you wicked lost devils, okay? Uh, you, you better be careful about um, lifting that nose of yours too high in the air, getting a little uh, full of yourself, okay? need to be careful. Let's continue. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic. With a K. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the mist of thee. Destroy your own self. A fire from the mist of thee. Meaning you will destroy your own self. I, I've seen I have seen, hello, and I have been through when pride is rampant, when uh, pride hath budded, and the Lord's like, okay, boy, you go ahead, you go ahead, oh, oh it backfired on you, huh? Oh, you're not as big as you think you are. Oh, you poor little thing. Why don't you weep a while and wallow in your own disgust? Yeah, come on, come on, 
Then let's talk. <laughs> it's not like I've never experienced that myself. I have. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and not, never shalt thou be any more. Is this the man, or is this the one who has corrupted all the uh, nations? Look at him now. Revelation chapter 18. And of, co of course, we have to go to Ezekiel, or Isaiah chapter 14. We have to. We have to. If we're talking about pride. We have to. Okay? I don't care if you've heard this a million times from me. You're going to hear it again. We don't have time for some of you to be taken with your own beauty and not smelling what you're shoveling. Yet some of you need to take a look at yourselves. Hi. Hi. We all, me, my wife, you, we all need to take a look at ourselves. Why do you think I'm always telling you to examine yourselves daily in the scriptures? What, you think, what, you think I'm just talking? I shut up, you, my enemies, you don't count. I'm talking to the brethren. I want to be uppity with you a little bit, yes. We don't have time. For those of you to be stuck on yourselves as though you are the greatest thing since sliced bread. Isaiah 14, verses 12, on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? That's what he's doing right now, by the way. Okay. <clears throat> okay. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. I will. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Pride. That's what Satan infused upon man when we, as man, disobeyed what God has said. And look at us now. Matthew chapter 16. Oh, by the way, um, there is a whole bunch more that could have been added to this. Uh, but then, like my... Uh, like our best friend has said, it's like, well, it could have been a mini-series. Mini <laughs> but, um, and brethren, while going through this and you come up with scriptures yourselves, scriptures are good to post in comments. So go ahead, you know, so go ahead. This, this could be voluminous, the amounts of scriptures that could be come, brought into this. This isn't even a third of them, okay? But go to Matthew chapter 16. Now this is very important to remember about Satan and those who serve him. All about the flesh. Okay? Satan is all about the flesh. Because he is, uh, goes on his belly to eat dust all the days of his life. And we are dust. Okay? Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 on to verse 23. From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes 
and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Pope Peter, <coughs> excuse me, you weren't expecting that, were you? Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now remember, remember that they were looking forward to the cross, right? Right, right, right? You uh, hyper dispensationalist, devil, Catholic, coadjutor, Jesuits, right? Uh, they were looking forward to the cross. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Why would Peter say that? But he, meaning Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And see, the same thing, our Lord was, uh, he looked at Peter, but while looking at Peter, he was addressing Satan. Same thing in uh, Ezekiel. Um, he was talking, or uh, talking first about Tyrus, but he was actually directing, talking to Satan. See, okay? But see, Satan, what does that say? Savor is not the things that be of God. Holiness, separation, abstaining from sin, mortification, putting down the flesh, living according to the scriptures. No, but those that be of men, give them a Bible. Say it's okay to sin. You're still saved. Your life doesn't need to change. You're still saved. Maybe, yeah, it should. But hey, don't worry about it. Be comfortable with your sin because, hey, you're saved. So go ahead and indulge it a little. Live it up. You know, light it up there, fuzzball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, someone who serves Satan, they might at first sound really pious and righteous, but it always comes back to the flesh. And that's a good way that you can spot them. Keep that in mind. And there are those of the church of the living God who let their flesh get right to their head. You're letting things get to your head. Go put your head in a bucket of ice cold water for a while and cool down, hot shot. Okay? John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 39 on to verse 37. Then answered and, and they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Abraham is our father. And who are these? These were the Jews that, verse 30 in John chapter 8, and as he spake these words, many believed on him. Yeah. Then you, if you read the entirety of John chapter 8, even those that believed on him at the end of John chapter 8 were ready to stone him. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, just believe. Nonsense. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. It's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. They, verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. But Jesus was questioning whether or not they were converted. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep, you're right. Let's continue. Ye do the deeds of your father. They just said they were born of Abraham. But our Lord said, you, ye do the deeds of your father. And he just said, this did not Abraham. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father. Even God. 
Have you run into these people? Hi. <laughs> Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. Uh, because Jesus is the father. <laughs> For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. When he said came of myself, he's referring unto the flesh that was born of woman. Okay? Okay? Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. And someone of the church of the living God who's hardened in pride? Yeah, like I said, you need to put your head in a bucket of ice cold water and cool off for a little bit. Ye are of your father the devil. Ah. Because the devil savors the things that be of men, not the things that be of God, flesh. Okay. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is the, a liar and the father of it. Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Go to Job. Go to Job. This is important for us to establish where pride originated from, where it stems from, and what it is relegated to, because Satan... Um, savors the things that be of man. Satan's all about flesh. And those who serve Satan are all about the skin suit. The things that are, are, that are uh, good for food, their God is their belly, things that look so beautiful, and things that will make them wise, knowing good and evil. Me, me, me. Oh, does it make you a little angry, huh? Huh? Are you are your tootsies a little sore yet? Oh, don't worry. We just got we just getting started, Jack. <laughs> Believe me. Job chapter forty one, verses fifteen. Under the close of the chapter, his scales are his pride, serpent. Remember, fire-breathing dragons, they were serpents. Big lizards. Yeah, fire-breathing dragons. Yeah, the, the scripture tells us that there were such. How do you know? Let's keep reading, okay? His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air, breath, can come between them. Air, breath, spirit, God breathe. No air can become come between those uh, scales because they're so close, they're so tight. You can't get through to some of these people. Some of those people who have made their own have made their decision to give themselves on to Satan so that they are worshiping him, all will be thine. You know, when they cross that line of no return. Get it. No, you don't get it. They are joined one to uh, one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. You can't get through to some people. Some people, if they are of the church of the living God and they just full of themselves, um, you need to pray like, hey Lord, okay, um, you deal with it. Because they won't listen to anyone else because you're not of their certain group. Okay? They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. 
by his kneesings, hatsu, or whatever, not sneezings, but kneesings, a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He was, uh, he was a light bearer, son of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. There's your fire-breathing dragon right there. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals and a flame goeth out of his mouth. You'll run across these people who are in pride and are of Satan himself, you know, work for Satan, believe on Satan, you know. Um, a lot of stuff they speak is just there to cause problems, cause strife, division, and start fires just to burn stuff up. That's what they do. A lot of these coadjutor devils, these infiltrators do that, okay? But there are those out there who are established um, in, on certain areas, on certain forums that are like that. They just open up their mouth and fire goes out. Don't it? In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. Yeah, we're supposed to have contrition for our sins, for what we have done to the Lord. Okay? But no, sorrow is turned into joy before him. Someone who is full of pride, they boast in their sin. These easy believe it is some devils who are so uh, vehemently against the changed life. They want you to be comfortable in your sin. Because remember, right, you're saved, sealed. Even though you didn't come to the Lord on his terms, you came, you just skipped over brokenness and contrition, and you just believe. The devils also believe in tremble. But, um, okay, you're saved, so go ahead. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. See, they want you to be comfortable in sin. That's why they're doing this. Okay? So it says there, sorrow is turned into joy before him. If you're joying in something that is clearly against Scripture, and you're one of these people who's like, well, God's grace covers it all, I ain't going to pull a punch. I doubt you're saved. I really, I really doubt that you are saved of the church and living God. Oh, you, you may be indeed a Christian. I'm sure you are. But of the church and living God? No. No. Remember, we're, we're supposed to have distinction, especially nowadays. You can have your Christianity and keep it. I want nothing to do with it. <gasps> no, no. Give me of my own the church of the living God. You go ahead and keep your Christians. Hmm. Okay. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. Yeah, they're all working together. These devil coadjutors and all these who are not of the church of the living God, one way or another, they are all working together because the end justifies the means. They're serving Satan, okay? They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. You know, I, I do pray for my enemies, a few of them. I know that uh, a select certain choice, humble uh, people uh, from merry old England over there, uh, I, I know that they cannot be moved. Still pray for them. But, um, yeah, a lot of these devils that you will encounter here on YouTube or on other platforms, you got to remember, the flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They've made their choice. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, hard-hearted. Yea, as hard as a piece of, a, of the nether millstone. About the millstone being hung around your neck and cast into the sea. That you get sunk to the bottom of the sea. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold. The spear, the dart, nor the haberdian. He esteemeth iron as straw. And brass is rotten wood. Iron and brass, things that will withhold, withstand heat. 
The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Ha ha! Crazy brave. Crazy brave. They have no fear of God. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Rather they fear men. Because they are serving the one who um, cares about the things of men. In the evil way, of course. Meaning sin. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. Mire, you know, like sinking in the mud. Sharp pointing things. You're going to sink, but you're going to be pierced within so you sink quicker. You know. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. Broad is the way that leadeth on to, dis to destruction. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The way of evil is covered with glitter, glamour, and glitz. Pomp. Like the Roman Catholic Church and her Jesuits. Yeah. He maketh the path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not, there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Pride is of the devil. And see, you and I as the church of the living God, saved, born again, and converted, okay, sin is in the skin suit, which these devils magnify because their God is the little wafer God, the little wafer flesh cookie, okay? But sin has been relegated here. We have that circumcision made without hands, our Lord Jesus Christ, that seal, okay? So we don't have to give ourselves over onto it. But see, we do. There is no such thing as sinless perfection on the earth. Okay? And when pride comes around, pride is always what? We've been looking at it. Excuse me. Pride is always relegated to what? Fleshly things. When you're boasting about your spirituality, okay, your spirituality and your wisdom and what you do and what you think is yours, that's all of flesh. That is not of the Spirit. It's not of the Spirit. And of course, because Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, go back to the beginning, chapter 3 again. Go back to the beginning, chapter 3 again. Verses 8 on to 13 now. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk Unless he has legs. How does he have legs unless he has a body? <laughs> okay. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? God knew the answer to these questions. He was giving Adam a chance to come clean. See, when pride is there, and pride has budded, uh, blossomed, and stuff like that, uh, the Lord gives you, uh, you know, a way to escape. He makes a way for you to escape the temptation, the temptation of your pride. Are you looking for that way of escape? He'll give it to you. And it, see, and this is what the easy believism, heretic, and all the devils hate. Humility. Oh, yeah. They hate humility. There are some, like the uh, Jesuit provincial, um, the hunter of souls in uh, England, who is a Jesuit provincial, I totally believe. Cannot prove that to you, but I believe that wholeheartedly. Perfect example of someone who has the most fake humility I've ever seen. Okay? Fake humility. Fake. 
Yeah, I believe you're a fraud. Can I prove that? No. But you and I both know we are, we're on to each other. Yeah. Let's continue this. But see, God was giving Adam a chance to come clean. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? He knew the answer. It's like, come on, fess up to me now. You're caught. I caught you. I know what you did. Of course he did. Why else would uh, Adam and Eve been, uh, beg your pardon, would have known they were naked? Come on, remember, like our best friend says, 2 plus 2 is 4, not 36, okay? Now, here is, in the, uh, here is the common thing for all men. And the man said, The woman that thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. You gave me her and because of her, yeah, I sinned and I ate. Pride. Not, see, what Adam should have done. So, yes, Lord. On me, Lord. This is my fault. But no. What do you do when you're in your pride? You put up roadblocks. You put them up like that. It's like, no, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, okay, yeah. But, but, okay. But it was you who gave me the woman. So it's your fault and you gave it. So it's, yeah, I said, but it's actually your fault. Yeah, I know we've been through this. So what? We don't got time for this kind of stuff, brethren. You need to be reminded and kicked a little bit. Hi, I do too. Okay? And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? It's like, okay, you blew it. Come on, Eve. And the woman said, The devil made me do it. <laughs> the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And hence, because of that, they get kicked out of the Garden of Eden. The first dispensation ended, which was works. All they had to do, they could see God. Okay? He was walking in the cool of the, in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay? The first dispensation of Scripture was works only, not faith alone. It's a lie. The, the, the Garden of Eden disproves uh, faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation onto itself, okay? But hence, that's where it came from. And you see this blaming of others. You see it in Aaron with the golden calf. You see it in Saul, okay? King Saul. And you see it in yourself. Hi. You see it in yourself. Because you're always quick because it's our old man. It's the old nature that's relegated to the skin suit, the flesh. Okay? That's why we're struggling with our flesh. Okay? Go to Psalm chapter 10. Psalm chapter 10. Psalm chapter 10. Verses 1, on the verse 11. I keep having a hair go into my mouth as I'm speaking, so beg your pardon. You needed to know that. Psalm chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 11. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Look what's happening today, brethren. Look what's happening to our brethren, Church of the Living God in Australia, and all those people over there. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Fire coming in, uh, out from himself, like we looked at in uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. Fire coming out of himself. Let's continue. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire. And blessed the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his countenance, countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. 
His ways are always grievous. His judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. And, put little, and look at verse 5. Unto the wicked who are proud, full of themselves, falling in line with all this, serving Satan, pretending to be authorized uh, version of the scriptures, believers, and they are not, okay? The enemies that they are puffing at are us. Because we are holding to the scriptures, the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. We're their enemies. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Careful. Careful on that uh, pedestal you're on. Must be lonely at the top for you, right? His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. Remember the poor, okay? How the wicked goes after the poor? Remember that, okay? We'll be touching on that very quickly here. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him, draweth him into his net. And these who are lost are taken in the snare, the net of Satan. And we come preaching repentance, brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, changed life, okay? That they may be uh, recover themselves, not that they save themselves, but that they come to the Lord on his terms and being broken of themselves, that they uh, re uh, get themselves out of the snare of the devil, okay? Not that they save themselves, okay? Remember, salvation, Calvinists, is not at gunpoint, okay? God is not forcing anything on you, okay? It's not that you save yourself. God saves you, okay? But he's not forcing you to come to him. He's there. You just got to go to him broken and contrite. And when you are truly broken and contrite, oh, tell me all day about how precious the blood of Jesus Christ who paid for your sins, who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Tell me how precious that is unto you. Not because you just simply believed and skipped over the important stuff. Yeah. Verse 9 again. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. He croucheth himself and humbleth himself. Okay? They look to pretend to be so humble that they, and send out their emissaries like Satan. Huh? Pretends that he's so humble, so sweet, so endearing. Remember? Yea, hath God said something that the fruit of the tree, good for the belly. Okay? Good to look at. One to make you wise. And also, verse 10 is talking about those who have false humility, who put on a facade that they are humble. And all you got to do is scratch them a little, and it's like, Ow! okay? But, number one, verse 9, he lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. Remember, the son of perdition is a copycat, is a fraud, Okay? When our Lord comes back, he's going to be coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 9. And Pope Peter, oh boy, he had a lot of pride. He had a really big pride problem too, just like our Apostle Paul did. Yeah, Peter had a lot of pride. Because remember when James sent the Jews in the book of Galatians, Peter, when the Jews came, he separated himself 
and uh, was at part of that dissimulation, okay? Although uh, all the world deny you, yet I never will. Yeah. Peter, the imperfect Peter, struggled with pride too. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder. He was an elder. He, was an, he, he himself was not one of prominence like the Roman Catholic Church likes to tell you. And a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partake, partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples of the flock. That means not guilt-tripping people. That means not to guilt-trip people. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. <laughs> yeah, these youngsters. Hey, I'm 47 years of age. I've only been saved for 13 years, okay? But I'm 47 years of age, okay? Uh, the younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 34. Go check that out on your own time. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, as a roaring lion. When our Lord comes back, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah, as a roaring lion. Satan is a copycat and a replacement, a fake. Okay? And of course, James chapter 4, we got, of course we got to go there. Okay? James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your even of your lusts that warn your members? Ye lust and have not; ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Who are you asking, men, or the Lord first? Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts, what you want to do. What you want to do. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Again, uh, Proverbs 3, verse 34. Check it out on your own time. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Stop. Stop. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit. Read this out loud with me. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
Unless you are submitted to God, you're not going to be able to resist the devil. Unless you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, sorry for your sins that you inflicted upon him that he died for. Fear the Lord that he's going to send you to hell. That's going to call you, cause you to call upon his name and ask him for his forgiveness. And after he come into you, he's going to change your life. But it begins with what? Submit yourselves therefore to God. If you're not submitted, how are you supposed to resist the devil? Again, verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You're a, you're a wave going up and down. Here today, gone tomorrow. The most unstable of men. Why is that? Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Having one foot in the world and one foot at the, uh, the table of the Lord? No, it's not either or. I mean, it's either or. There's no middle ground. There's no option C or gray area. Excuse me. It's either or. Which one is it? You can't have both. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Remember what we looked at in Job? Sorrow is turned to joy before him because they joy in their sins. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. And he shall lift you up. Okay? Now, remember the poor how he catcheth the poor. Go back to Psalms. But go now to Psalm 50. Okay? Or, excuse me, Psalm 51. Go back to Psalm 50. Uh, go to that. Sorry. Psalm 51. <laughs> I did an expository video on Psalm 51. If in the scriptures you're going to find anything that resembles a sinner's prayer, it's Psalm 51. I do not uh, count the prayer of Manasseh because that is not inspired scripture. Okay? But remember here in Psalm 50 that we looked at uh, verses 16 on to verse 23, right? Where, um, or is that what we looked at? No, that was in Psalm 10. Excuse me. But Psalm 50, verses 16. On to verse 23. Okay? I skipped one. Okay? Psalm 50 we're going to read. Okay? Remember the poor that we were talking about in Psalm 10? Okay? Got a little confused. Beg your pardon. Psalm 10. I told you, remember the poor? Psalm 50. Verses 16 on to verse 23. Beg your pardon for that. Let's continue. But on to the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? What is it with you? Huh? What What is it with you? Why won't you come to the Lord on his terms? Maybe because you've cho uh, made your choice? Your pride is that uh, much in you? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Every single one of these easy believism heretics. They give lip service unto them believing the scriptures. It's a sticker on their facade, but they really don't. When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Someone who is of the world, and remember, a thief and a robber goeth up some other way, except through the door, okay? Thou givest thy mouth to evil, thy tongue frameth deceit. Yea, hath God said, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. 
These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Yeah. You make God into your own image. Jesus is your homeboy, right? God is holy. God is other. God is separate. God cannot sin. God cannot behold sin. Okay? But see, I beg your pardon. How many of you, especially you Trinitarians, especially you Trinitarians, who demote Jesus Christ and make him uh, the second part of a satanic trinity, you demote Christ. You make him into your own image. You make a God of your own liking. The one that you look at in the mirror. You think that Jesus is just like you. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. How are you going to praise the Lord unless you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God? When you come to him broken and contrite and in fear of the Lord, only then will you truly be able to praise the Lord. But touching on verse 21, okay? Touching on verse 21, Romans chapter 1. Hold your place there because we're going to be in Psalm 51. Um, so, uh, Romans chapter 1. Come on, fingers, work with me. Romans chapter 1, verses, of course, 22 on to verse 25 again. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Because the fruit of the tree of the garden of knowledge of good and evil was good for the belly, flesh, beautiful to look at, wanted to make you wise. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Verse 21 in Psalm 50. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. Yeah, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but he never sinned. He can't sin. He could not sin. It's impossible for God to sin. What Satan tempted was the flesh. Okay? Go back to Romans chapter 1. Verse 23 again, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Birds, the third member of the satanic trinity. Uh, four-footed beasts, the golden calf. Man, corruptible man, you will be like the Most High. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature, their belly, man, flesh, more, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. That's what you're doing. When you're in pride, you're living in the flesh. And now... <laughs> and now, Psalm 51, verses 9, on to verse 17. Like I said, the closest you're going to get to a sinner's prayer, Psalm 51. Remember the poor that we looked at in Psalm 10, 1 through 11? Why do they, ha why do they hunt the poor? Why do they hate the poor? Verses 9 on to verse 17. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, dispensational difference here, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. During the dispensation of the law, there was no eternal security. 
No one was sealed. Okay? Eternal security was not there. Today you come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite, and you have fear of the Lord and you call upon his name. He will save you and seal you. Okay? Because he knows your heart if you are truly broken and contrite. And he will change your life. Dispensational difference there. But looking at the cast me not away from thy presence, you're living in sin, hand one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Cast away. He may let things fall upon you that might normally he would not. Let's continue. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto me. Unto thee, excuse me, unto thee. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt, delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Yes, to be saved, you have to die. To be saved, it costs you. Unlike what the easy believism heretic tells you. It's going to cost you your pride, your self-righteousness, a broken spirit, and a contrite heart. It's right there. Well, you don't think that applies for today? You're lost. Or ignorant. One of the two. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Proverbs, chapter 6. Proverbs, thank you. Proverbs, chapter 6, verses 12, on to verse 19. A naughty person, a wicked man, a wicked man is a naughty person, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers, putting on a facade, false front. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth, soweth discord. Uh, out of his mouth, uh, fire, uh, he kindles coals by fire that comes out of his mouth. A lot of people who say they are of the church of the living God, yet are rather Christians. They speak and they start fires wherever they go. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination, seven are an abomination unto him. Six is attributed to man. A proud look. We have God for our Father. Look at what I have done. This is my ministry. I've read the scriptures more than you. I fast two times in the week or whatever. Me, me, me. A lying tongue. Openly deceitful, but are you lying to yourself about how great you are or think you are? Hi. And hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. That and every imagination of their heart was evil continually. What God said about man in the book of Genesis in the beginning, before He destroyed the world with a flood. You think that changed? Feet that be swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. 
And it begins with a proud look. And of course, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 11, on to verse 14. For wisdom is better than rubies, precious stones. Wisdom is better than rubies, precious stones. Job echoes that, doesn't he? What is wisdom? Come on, come on, say it. One of you, put it in the comment section. What is wisdom? You ought to know that by heart. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Wisdom, prudence. Fear of the Lord, prudence, wisdom. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What's the first thing mentioned? Don't look at me. Huh? What's the first thing mentioned? Pride. And arrogancy. And the evil way in the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Pride. What is the axe to boast against the hand that yields it? What is the clay to say unto the potter? What, why have you made me thus? Like I said, there was a ton more we could have put into this. You look these up on your own. I'm referencing uh, Romans chapter 9, by the way. Okay? Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fall. You gotta be careful. You gotta be really, really careful. Colossians chapter 3. And thank you to my beloved, our beloved, our best friend, for pointing this out to me. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1 on verse 17. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. It's easy to confuse the two, isn't it? That's why you need to examine yourselves daily. Hi. Okay? Not just read the scriptures as some mechanical thing so you can say, okay, I've done my reading for the day. No. Glean the scriptures. Rue upon the scriptures. Indulge in them. Examine yourself. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, kill, put down. Therefore your members which are upon earth. And all of these that are mentioned, thank you brother, my dear friend, my best friend. These are all idolatry, fornication uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. They're all idolatry. Remember that forbidden fruit? Good for the belly, beautiful to look at, and one to make you wise. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You hear the gospel and reject it, you're a child of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that hath created him. Which, ha which after the image of him that excuse me, created him. Where there is neither Jew, Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, elect meaning that you went to the cross on his terms, his conditions. Okay, the elect is referring to the cross. 
Not this Calvinism nonsense, okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And ah, there we go. Now see, during the kingdom of heaven, if you do not forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Today in this dispensation, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. You have that circumcision made without hands, which is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, which is liberty, and the Lord is that Spirit, okay? That circumcision made without hands is the Lord Jesus Christ himself in you, okay? Today, in this dispensation, Church of the Living God, you don't want to forgive someone, you're not going to lose your salvation. But your heart's going to be hard. You're going to have a hard time. Your fruit is going to stink. Okay, your walk is going to be messed up. You're going to pay a hard, a hard and heavy price if you harbor animosity, guilt, and um, vengeance in your heart. Okay. Now we are guilty. Yes, we are guilty. Yes. But if you hold on to a grudge, like I said, you want to hold on to a grudge as a church of the living God, you're not going to lose your salvation. But if you hold on to a grudge, especially those of your own, of the church of the living God, you don't forgive those, your brethren, church of the living God, you might not like one another. I might not like you. You might not like me, but you're my brother. Therefore, hey, okay, I ain't got no problem with you. Okay? You're to forgive your brethren. Okay? Your brethren. But if you don't forgive someone like a lost person or even your own brother, um, you're not going to lose your salvation, but you're going to pay a heavy price for it. A price that is not worth it. Hi. And above all these things, put on charity, which is self-sacrifice, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Okay? Alright? Now, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1, verses 1, under verse 8. Further, therefore, further, furthermore, excuse me, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk, and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, getting sin out of your life, living according to the scriptures, that ye should abstain from fornication, Physical, spiritual. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, separation. Have we not already, already made that abundantly clear? Well, 
Where, where were we going to read? Oh, verse 8. He therefore des that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. And the Lord is that Spirit. He has given us himself. See. We're supposed to be separate. And we do sin. We are going to sin. And yes, pride will come up in you. But see, you got to beware about that pride. And when the, the second, the millisecond you come aware of it, you get down on your knees, buddy. You know what, what helps me? You know what helps me? The Book of Lamentations. And I've recommended on this on to many of you before. You know, when you're starting to be tempted from your own flesh uh, by your sin and wanting to give yourself over to thinking that you're some great one, read the book of Lamentations. Read the book of Lamentations from, from beginning to end. That, at least with me, that was done to the apple of his eye. The apple of his eye, God's chosen people, the Jew, unto whom we have been grafted in. That'll help you. Helps me. But now, brethren, now we're going to have a little bit of expository going on. Just a little bit. Go to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Hold on one second, brethren. All right. Daniel chapter 4. We are going to read verses 19 on to the close of the chapter. But we're going to make some stops along the way. Okay? Daniel chapter 4. Now this is after, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, he sees this vision and whatnot. And then Daniel is breaking it down for him. Okay? This is what we're going to be focusing on. And incidentally, I truly believe that King Nebuchadnezzar is up there waiting for us. So, Daniel chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse seven, uh, 37, close of the chapter. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was a stone for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord... The dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, grew up real high, okay? Whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown, and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. Second Chronicles, chapter 26. Second Chronicles, chapter 26. King Nebuchadnezzar is being a very, getting a very stern warning from Daniel. Second Chronicles chapter 26 verses 11 unto verse 20. Or onto uh, Second Chronicles, Brad. Thank you. Second Chronicles chapter 26 verses 11 unto verse 20. King Uzziah. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men that went out to war by bands, according to the number of their count, by the hand of Jeel, the scribe, and Maziah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men. Oh, 
kind of liken those onto the Ruckmanites. Or these weird Denlingerites. The whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were 2,600. See, when you have an entourage puffing you up, like as Ruckman did, and under their hand was an army, 300,000 and 7,500, that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the hosts Host shields and spears and helmets and haberdashers and bows and slings to ca cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines, invented by cunning men, to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped. He was. Till he was strong. What happened when he became strong? When he became a somebody? He already was a somebody, but what happened? It, 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 it went to his head. Let's see. What happened? Don't look at me. Don't look at the scriptures. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. See, he was thinking of himself more highly than he ought. Okay? So he was going in to burn incense because he's the king. Look at him. He could do no wrong. Right? Let's continue. Then Azariah the priest went in after him, with him and with him four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And withstood Uzziah the king. Like, whoa, hey, hey, yo, king, lo, hey, I know you're king. I know you're pretty full of yourself. But, whoa, whoa, hold up, stop, time out, wait a second, okay? And said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, o, unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out to the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Okay, you're you're not called to this. Okay, be, be, get out of here. Don't don't stop. Okay, you're not well, You're not a priest. You're not okay. The Lord has put you to do something, and now you're trying to think you're something more than you ought to be, and now you're endeavoring to do something else. You, you, you stop, stop, get out. But look at his reaction at first. Then. Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. It's like, who are you? I'm king. I, with the censer in his hand. He was mad. It's like, who are you guys? I'm King Uzziah. And while he was wroth with the priests, leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar rose up in his forehead because in his own head, his his pride went right to his head and leprosy is a skin disease that eats you and Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him and behold he was leprous in his forehead and they thrust him out thence Yea, himself hasted to go also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. They're like, get, get out! He's like, whoa, whoa, I'm going, I'm going. But by then it was too late. And if you were to finish, if we were to finish, which we're not, um, he died separated as a leper. And what was it? His son Jotham basically was the front man while he was in the background because of his sin. Quite a heavy price. Giving yourself over to pride. High. Is a heavy price. Oh, I was I was saving the Lord's money, putting into my body the most toxic garbage 
genetically modified, and I was saving money. Meaning because uh, to eat healthier costs money, unfortunately, a little bit more than buying the cheap genetically modified stuff. But good health, especially right now, is worth it. Go back to Daniel now, chapter 4, picking up from verse 23. Well, let's read verse 22 again. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion is to the end of the earth. Okay? Verse 23, and whereas the king saw, pardon, saw a watcher and unholy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as an oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. If you got something, why do you boast yourself as though you weren't given it? Simply put. Verse 26. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule, Meaning, once you've learned your lesson, you'll come back. Now look at verse 27. Whereas, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Okay, here's where Daniel is saying. Uh, repent. Repent. You, you, Daniel here put it sweetly as sweet as can be. He was gentle. Then again, he was King Nebuchadnezzar, who could have killed him just like that. But he put it to him gently and sweetly. Okay. Daniel is telling King Nebuchadnezzar to repent. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness. Repent. And thine iniquities by shewing mercy to the poor. Repent. If it may be a length within of thy tranquility, repent. Ezekiel chapter 2. Can you handle this? Ezekiel chapter 2. You know, because it's, it's such a long chapter. Hopefully we can get done within the three hour time limit here. That is sarcasm, by the way. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me, and he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. Remember we are uh, called to be ministers of reconciliation. We are ambassadors. Ministers of reconciliation. Having the word of reconciliation. Okay. For they are impudent children and stiff hearted. Like um, upper millstone. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them. Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And our Lord echoes that. 
He who has ears to hear, let him hear. You know, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The God of the Old is the God of the New. One God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay? Let's continue. But before we continue, put this in context with those of the Church of the Living God who are in pride. It happens, brethren. Hello. Hello. I've let my pride get the best of me. But see, the Lord gave me a thorn in the flesh. I always used to think my thorn in my flesh was my memories, which would come back at the most abstruse times, especially in prayer, reading the scriptures. I'll be reading something and something's like, whoa, no. no. He loved me enough to give me a heart condition. To keep me in fear. To buffet me. Because if I mess around on the Lord, He can take it out from under me. Just like that. If you're of the church of the living God, and you're in pride, number one, I pray that the Lord help you see it. And number two, when you just, just get a little glimmer of that, you get down on your knees, hot shot. Please. And now, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou speak, and thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, Hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat, the, and eat that I give thee. Now, people out there, out there are rebellious, hard-hearted. They don't want to hear our words because they're the words of our Lord. We are to speak, prophesy. The Lord in us speaking to them through the scriptures. That's prophesying for today. Okay? Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Okay? But also when it comes unto our own, brethren. If you're in pride and you are of our own, if you are of the church of the living God, humble yourselves. Because let me tell you, it's no fun when the Lord does it. But then again, when the Lord does it, it is a glorious thing because His mercy endureth forever. Read the book of Lamentations sometime. When you, like I said, when you're starting to get tempted to sin, when you're starting to get, you know, hurting your elbow by patting yourself on the back, you know, it's all, all this fame and glamour got to your head. Read the book of Lamentations. Hi, <laughs> cut you down real quick. Let's continue. Verse nine. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. And when the Lord is guiding you unto himself through the scriptures, breaking you, you're going to read the scriptures and it's going to do nothing but break you apart. It's going to destroy you. Until he save you, and then he's in you, and uh, comparing spiritual things, the Lord within you with spiritual things, okay? Look at verse 6. Let's read this again. Read this again. And thou, son of men, and thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. Briars and thorns. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Okay? Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Oops, 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 oops. Don't do that. You gave me this. 
you gave me this set of scriptures. And thank you so much. You know who you are. Mark chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, Neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. Those who are uh, uh, speaking in context about those who are of our own, who uh, fear the cares of this world, choke them that the word become unfruitful. Okay? And also, verse 6. And thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Okay? Matthew chapter 10, just one verse. Verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Uh, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Matthew 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. Wise as serpents. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, let's find out. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Come on, fingers, work with me. Verses 11 on to verse 17. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices, the tactics that he uses. Yea, hath God said. Remember, remember, remember the fruit good for the belly, look good, and one to make you wise. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Got to be careful about letting yourself, letting everything go to your head. Got to be careful about setting yourself way, uh, way up on high. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, a door was opened unto me of the Lord. I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet, a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, okay, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are as we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, such as uh, the Bible translators, okay, and these uh, easy believism heretics. Oh yeah, yeah, you don't need to change life. Oh no. Brokenness and contrition. No, repentance is from going to unbelief to... Okay. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of, of God, speak we in Christ. Okay. So, being harmless, uh, being wise as serpents, as harmless as doves, uh, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. And what are his devices? Uh, verse 17, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Yea, hath God said? Ah, you, you disobey. Your eyes are going to be open. Make your own judgments. Look at that. Look at that fruit. 
Look at that fruit. It fill you up. Don't it look beautiful? It'll make you wise, too. You see? See what pride does to you, man. Woman. Hi. Hi. I'm speaking to myself as well as onto you. Okay? Now, Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 10. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down. To destroy and to throw down. To build and to plant. That's what Daniel was doing to King Nebuchadnezzar there in verse 27. Okay? That's what he was doing. He was gently, it's like, hey, King Nebuchadnezzar, you need to repent. Okay? Look at verses 17 on verse 19 now. In Jeremiah chapter 1. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Why is that? That's simple. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 29. Not Joe. Why would you go over there? Proverbs chapter 29. You know the verse, don't you? Verse 25. Stop it. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Let's read verse 24. Let's read verse 23 on to verse 25, actually. A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Where comes your honor? Before honor comes humility. It comes from the Lord. Whoso is partnered with a thief hateth his own soul, and a thief climbeth up some other way instead of going through the door. You, you fallen for the tenets of easy believism, you hate your own soul. He heareth cursing and bewrayeth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Shall, shall be safe. Okay, go back to Jeremiah. Verse 18 uh, and chapter 1. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee. <laughs> oh yeah, they sure do. But they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Abide in me, and I in you. A branch cannot bring forth fruit unless he abide in him. You can do nothing without our Lord Jesus Christ. Abide in him. See? Okay? And of course, one verse in Jeremiah chapter 2. Verse 19. Got to remember about pride. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. A fire shall come out of himself, consuming him. Meaning, he'll be taken in his own trap. He'll be taken in his own pride. We don't got the time for me to tell you how many times that has happened to me. And it's still an ongoing process. I praise the Lord for my heart problem. Because it keeps me very close to my Lord. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. And thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter. That thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God. And that my fear is not in thee. Saith the Lord God of hosts. Very stern warning. 
Now, go back to Daniel chapter 4, picking up at verse 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. And at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the king of Babylon. The king spake and said, The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom? For the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. Roll that around your head. Uh, you know, unplug your ears, stick your head in a bucket of ice cold water. My kingdom, what I have done, what I want to do. I've built this. Third John. Third John. Nine and ten. I wrote unto the church, but di diatrophies, excuse me, diatrophies, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. I like to be the high up one. Receiveth us not. Who are you to talk to me? Right? But watch yourself. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words of ill intent, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. You know, the devils have accused me of casting people out. I just won't have fellowship with people anymore. It's not that I cast them out. It's like, uh, you know, if I see problems or uh, people are struggling and I don't want to be brought down with them, um, meaning like go down because considering myself, okay, I don't want to be brought into sin, okay, um, I'll, I'll step away. Got to really be careful. Got to really be careful about wanting to have the preeminence. Okay. And Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 is before Matthew chapter 24. And Matthew chapter 23 is describing what? The spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 under verse 12. About diatrophies, who likes to have the preeminence? Before, I mean, we're very close to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. We are. And isn't it amazing that what we're about to read, we're seeing right now? These Christians in their buildings. And elsewhere, too, even amongst the church of the living God. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. And do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne. And lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylactic trees and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the upper ro uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets 
and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Peter Ruckman, in certain of his videos and sermons, you could tell he was getting off on the fact that they were, hey, hey, you know he loved it. You know he enjoyed the, the, the people uh, get, uh, clapping for him, praising him. You know it. Come on. You know it. It's evident in some of his uh, videos. He loved it. It was obvious. If you don't amen me, amen me, I'll amen myself. I've even said that. Shame on me. Shame on me. Let's continue, okay? But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren, those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You're not saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, but know yet better you're a Christian, you're not my brother. Okay? It's that simple. You may be of the church of the living God and um, ignorantly calling yourself a Christian, that's something else, okay? That's something different. But, you know, you're one of these devils who attributes to yourself Christian? Yeah, you are better off being called a murderer than a Christian. Well, they are, okay? Let's continue. And call no man father upon the earth, such as a religious title, father so-and-so, okay? For one is your Father, capital F, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters. For one is your Master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. You're to be servant of all. Striking, scary words, aren't they? Aren't they? Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. Verses 10 on to verse 14. Let's, let us remember this too. Luke verses 10 on verse 14 in Luke 18. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Oh God, I thank thee that I am so holy so separated that I don't uh, that I'm so much above all these people that I can't have any um, um, commonality with the brethren because I'm so up here I fast twice in the week I give tithes of all that I possess and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven smote upon his breast saying God be merciful to me a sinner it's what you need to do if you're in pride pride your self-righteousness is going to keep so many of you from salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ because you're just too good see easy believism you're just too good to call upon the name of the Lord. No, because you're saved by what you do. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Okay? Okay? Now, let's go back to Daniel chapter 4. Let, let's reread that again. Verse 30. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom, for the house of the kingdom, by the might of my power, and for the honor of my majesty? Look at what I have done. Look at what manipulation 
tactics I have utilized to get more attention, to get more things. Look at what I have done to bring about my thing that I am doing. God giveth the increase? Then why do you got to go out and... Then? Never mind. I don't get that. I don't get that. You want to ask someone for help. You ask the Lord. You ask the Lord. We ask the Lord for help all the time. We do. And He does. Yeah, you ask the Lord who will supply your need, not your greed. And is it a greed to just make you look so much better? I'm talking, I'm talking to myself as well to you. Because brethren, we don't got time for this. Really? Let's continue. <clears throat> While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, now he was warned by Daniel, okay? And unlike um, King David in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 14, we skipped that, I'm not going to read it to you. Um, when Saul was confronted, he blamed the people. When Aaron was confronted, he blamed the people. When King David was confronted, he blamed himself. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Be careful. The Lord can give, he can definitely take away. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Okay? The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. He had a pride problem, obviously, and he had to be cut down to size. He was warned, but no, he was too good of he was too full of himself. Look, he looked at everything that I had accomplished by my power, by my uh, manipulation, by what I have done. He was warned. But no, he was too good. You weren't well, you weren't part of his special clique. He was warned. As are you, as am I. What are you gonna do with it, hot shot? Right? Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> I have a pride problem. Okay? I struggle with my pride daily. When I do, my, my heart starts giving me a problem. Things with my wife and I, we butt heads. The same hour, verse 33, under verse 35. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagle feathers and his nails like bird's claws. He became like a beast, a beast who has no fear. The Lord has de deprived the beasts of the fear of the Lord. Um, they have not souls. A beast has a spirit and a body. A beast does not have a soul. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as 
nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're almost done. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, Paul, he went up to the third heaven, paradise, where God is. There's the sky, there's the dome, and then there's where God is. Okay? Okay? Got it? And he saw things that it was not lawful for someone to utter. You got these devils who said they've been to heaven and come back and telling about it. And it always seems that their stories contradict one another. Okay? Um, they're liars. The Apostle Paul never said anything about it. But see... Um, he was taking, uh, talking about, um, you know, how he was defending himself in chapter 12 as well, as well, you know, because uh, people were questioning him. But before he got on to, uh, com you know, saying, hey, look, you, you guys compelled me. You gave me no choice. I had to defend myself. But we have to remember this. Remember, Paul struggled with pride. Paul's greatest sin was his pride, as was, as was Peter. Oh, yeah, you Catholics don't like that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 on to verse 10. On to verse 11. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And my thorn in my flesh is literally my heart problem. For this thing I, be, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches in necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. See, Uzziah was marvelously helped until he was strong. When you are weak, that's when our Lord does his greatest in you and through you. But see, when you start getting a little uppity of yourself, this is my thing, my whatever. This is, look at what I've done. I've got to put forth the effort to get people to give to me for what I'm doing, the way I do it. Press it in their face. Careful. Careful. I am become a fool in glory. You have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you. For nothing I am behind the very chiefest apostle of uh, very chiefest apostles, though I, I be nothing. From dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. I'm nothing. I am absolutely nothing. And you know what? I have to be reminded of that every single day. How about you? Like our best friend says, How are you doing today, brother? Better than I deserve. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 1 and verse 10. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, not being saved, are saved, being saved. That's a trick of the Bibles given to you from Rome. Okay? If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, Believed in vain, without coming to the Lord on his terms. Like the easy believism heretics. Vain believers, we ought to call them. 
For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, the gospel is being described here, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, Peter. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, and am not meet to be called an apostle, because I, persecute, uh, because I persecuted the Christians. Right, brother? That's what you were going to say, wasn't it? Yeah. One mind, remember? <laughs> uh, no, because I persecuted the church of God. When you, you're following me along, brother, you did that, didn't you? Because I persecuted the Christians, didn't you, right? Yeah. <laughs> but by the grace of God, I am that I, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed, bestowed upon me was not in vain. And I labored all and but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Okay? We have to. We have to go to Galatians. We, we have to. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Okay? We have to go to Galatians chapter 2. Which verses? 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs who bark. Dogs who bark? i got to remember to link that one in this video. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. When you are pouring out to your people about uh, having them to give to you, when you are doing it, you are having confidence in the flesh. You're having confidence in the flesh. Don't tell me otherwise. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, perse persecuting the Christians, uh, excuse me, persecuting the church, <laughs> touching the righteousness of which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. 
Remember, if you need help, ask for it. And you know, if you are of the church of the living God and you need help from a brother, first ask the Lord. Okay? But, if you're depending on your own devices, if you're going off of what others, like what these church building people do, you ask God first, and He will bring the increase. You know, there have been brethren out there who have asked me, it's like, hey, Brad, can you help me? And it's like, I, I can't, brother. What we have, uh, the Lord gives us specifically as we need for what we need. Okay? And there have been times, yes, that I have helped other brethren. Yes, there has been when, I, when there was two uh, available. They've come and asked them. Yes, they have. But remember, if you got to um, lay guilt trips on people, like these church building people do, they tell you about tithing, you know, pour, uh, bring the meat into my uh, storehouse. And see that I not pour upon you a blessing that you can't be uh, quoting Malachi. Okay? People in the church buildings that do that. If you're re resorting to those types of tactics, you're trusting in your flesh. You're trusting in your flesh. And 1st Timothy chapter 1. 1st Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which in faith so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity, self-sacrifice, out, out of a pure heart and out of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain janglings, jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. These false prophets, they run. Okay? But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers and murderers of mothers, excuse me, for manslayers. Okay? You wouldn't have known sin unless the law said thou shalt not covet. Okay? For whoremongers and them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured, for perjured persons, and if there be anything, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Faithful. Who put him, uh, Paul into the ministry? The Lord did. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Here it is. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom everyone is chief. Of whom I, who, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth, a, might chew forth all long suffering 
for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting, being an example to follow. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Daniel chapter 4. Let's finish this up. Verses 36 on to verse 37. I've got to watch my time. At the same time my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Revelation chapter 3. Take your pardon, brethren. One second. One second. Revelation chapter 3. Verses 14 on to verse 22. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I, were, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, you know, either it's either or. You're either saved or lost. You're either doing something or you're not. There is no option C. There is no middle ground. He calls that lukewarm. Okay? So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He'll vomit. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. Whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15. I read this today. Verses 1 under verse 7. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Dispensational difference. Again, he will not deny himself. But if you of the church and living God forsake him and give yourself over to your pride... Again, that's dangerous. And you're lost. You're full of yourself. Wow. Wow. Death, hell, and the grave awaits you, dear friend. 
Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when they in turn but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation, look what's happening today, and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Your works will be tried at the uh, judgment seat of Christ, whether they be gold or wood, hay, and stubble. You're going to receive a reward, okay? But uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verses 1 under verse 15. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Specifically to, uh, talking unto the Jews, said unto a nation, not unto an individual man. Okay, That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, spirit, soul, and body, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. You are supposed to teach your children, not Jesuits. Okay? Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. This is where the people, you've seen the Jews, put the box of scripture on their head, okay? They take that literally, they tie that thing around their head, and they put scripture right there. That's where they twist that from. Remember, modern Judaism is not scriptural Judaism, okay? It's mixed with Kabbalistic magic, okay? And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy, thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou ha shalt have eaten and be full. Others have laid the groundwork. Okay, others have laid the, uh, the, the foundation, our Lord Jesus Christ. We are planting, we water, but God giveth the increase. Okay, remember? God, not you, through your wonderful um, speaking or whatever, Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are around about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 18, under verse 29. Romans chapter 11, verses 18, under verse 29. Okay? 
get a load of this. You evil people who uh, are replacement theology. Catholics. Boast not the, against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Uh, be careful about how you speak against the Jews, which today are still the apple of God's eye. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Replacement, see? Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded. Fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Yeah, like I said, your pride getting the best of you? Thinking about sinning? Read Lamentations. He did that to the apple of his own eye. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, because salvation is of the Jew, we were grafted into their tree, the Gentile, okay? How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, Lest ye, should be, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so, all, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, that shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And for this, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, us Gentiles. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Verse 29. For the gifts and calling of God are without belief. Excuse me. Are without repentance. Boast not thyself, especially against the Jews. God has a real big problem with boasting. A really big problem with boasting. And then you might be asking, well, okay, okay, so so what? So what do you what, what am I supposed to do? Go to Psalm 18. I also read this today. Psalm 18. Verses 22 on the verse 27. Psalm 18 verses 22 on the verse 27. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. See, you put the scriptures away, you don't uh, be in the scriptures. You're weak. And that could lead you to going in and giving yourself over unto your iniquity. See, we're supposed to examine ourselves daily. Okay? Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands and his eyesight. Yes, he will reward you, whether it be good or whether it be evil. With the merciful thou wilt shew thyself merciful. With an upright man thou wilt shew thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt shew thyself pure. And with the froward thou wilt shew thyself froward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. What does the Lord want from Micah chapter 6, verses 6 and verse 9. Hmm. Wherefore shall I come before the Lord 
and bow myself and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings with calves of a year old? I remember this guy in a comment uh, asking a rhetorical question. He was asking a question whose answer he didn't want to um, want answered. He was just asking a question to cause strife and debate. He's like, well, what then? What is enough? Okay, what do I got to do to be saved? And stuff like that. He was asking trick questions. I blocked them long ago because I was on to him. He was asking rhetorical questions to just cause strife and debate. Okay? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? See, and this is the kind of reasoning that comes from one of these easy believism devils. They're just belief. No brokenness, contrition, or fear of the Lord, or change life. None of it. Just believe. Okay? And they're like, well, what, what does it take? It's simple. He has shewed thee, O oh man. What is good? Then there is none good but who? God. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly in humbling yourself and to love mercy, his mercy. Not be brazen and arrogant about it because you just received it, because you believed, without coming to him on his terms, broken and contrite. And to walk humbly with thy God. It's simple. It's simple. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city. And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it. It's simple. Come to him broken and contrite. But see, you easy believers and devils, you're just too good, aren't you? Full of pride. And these easy believism devils, you know, big smile, buddy. Um, you don't walk humbly before your God. Well, you do walk humbly before your God, who is the little G God of this world, Satan, your father, the devil. But no, it's simple. Come to him broken and contrite. And in that brokenness and contrition, the fear of the Lord will come upon you. And you will call upon his name. And may he save you. And when he saves you, your life going to change. Finally, Matthew chapter 20. Verses 20 unto verse 28. And we'll be done. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. Look at how our Lord responds here. And he said unto them, ye shall, drink, ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Identify with his suffering he's talking about, okay? But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. I believe personally that he's making reference unto the two anointed ones, Moses and Elijah, that's what I think. I don't know. Can't prove that. But that's just a theory of mine. Let's continue. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Like they do in these church buildings. And when you use the tactics of a church building hireling, come on, man. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be 
your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. To give his life a ransom. The Son of Man hath not uh, where to lay his head. God the Father, God manifest in the flesh, washing the feet, the stinking feet of the fishermen, dying on the cross, shedding his blood for you and me because of what you did, because of what I did unto him. And in this time, you're going to be proud. It's going to be it for this video. Hopefully, uh, I do believe that the point was uh, gotten across to you quite, quite well. I hope. <laughs> then again, there are those of you who get all full of yourself. Uh, and then there are those of you who aren't even going to make it through five minutes <laughs> of this. That's fine. That's fine. Please consider these things. This is not the time for us to be proud, to be full of ourselves, to dangle things over other, to um, um, to be to uh, uh, exercise lordship over people. It's hardly the time. We are to serve one another, brother, and to be humble. Because remember, you and I are dust. We are dust and ashes. From dust thou art, unto dust we shall return. And who are we at all? To say to, the, uh, to our Father, what made, why did you make me like this? Or to be full of yourself, as though you are some great one because of your own doings. This isn't a one-man show. You might think it is, but it's not. I needed to hear. I, we're going to listen to this. Uh, I I rarely, rarely listen to any of my videos after they've been uploaded. I, I, I don't get involved in that. But I'm probably going to listen to this one because I'm going to need to hear it myself. Because I struggle with pride. I struggle with pride. Oh, tremendously. So please take this to your heart, brethren. Please consider these things. Humble yourselves. Serve one another. Love one another. Don't think too highly of yourself than you ought to think. I, Because then you're doing something that the devil will do. It's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this, brethren, if you do. Thank you to all you, Church of the Living God. First and foremost, those of you who keep us in your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. We value your prayers above all else. Prayers move mountains. Thank you for your prayers. And for those of you who actually give to us, who have provided for us, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord provide for you. May you have a fruitful harvest. Thank you so much for what you have given us. And thank you for your prayers. Without you, without the Lord through you, we'd be done. Thank you, brother. We love you. Thank you, Church of the Living God. In the name of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you.